and welcome back to yet another episode of Photillustrator TV. And today I have a really special tutorial. I'm going to show you how to create splashes created by maybe a falling object or in this case feet in the water. So this was a question that I got from and I'm going to butcher this name I'm sure but Raif Fluker uh, who wanted who sent me a composite that he had been working on or is working on and wanted me to show him how to create or any tips on how to create the splashes created from feet. So I was inspired since I didn't really have a uh, necessarily an image that I could work up that already had that I was inspired to create one and this is the image that we see here all right so now before I get into this tutorial I want to make clear very very clear that there is more than one way to go about skinning this cat all right so this is not the only way and to be really honest with you when I got into this and started breaking into it I didn't really know how I was going to approach it or what I was going to do. Uh, so what you see here today is just how I approached it today on this one. All right. So five months from now, six months from now, I might approach it a completely different way. So stay tuned. All right. So here's what I want you to get out the three takeaways to get out of today's tutorial. So first is how to create splashes using Photoshop. And of course, that's obvious. Hopefully that's what you get out of it. But additionally, I want you to get out of it that our job as composite photographers is to be convincing, not perfect. So I know for myself that I can spend a lot of time working on an image in this, uh, you know, this pursuit of being perfect. And eventually at some point I have to realize, or this is what I go through. I have to realize that, you know, perfect is going to elude me on this portrait. And it's a constant, constant, uh, you know, process of getting more and more and more perfect, uh, closer to that place where I feel comfortable of releasing an image. In the meantime, it's really about being convincing. As long as I convince you, the viewer, that what I am trying to create, uh, you know, exists or could be real, then I'm happy. All right, so then third, and also, by the way, every image that I do has mistakes in it, every single one, and those mistakes drive me bonkers and nuts, and I always take notes down after every image and what mistakes I made, where I can get better, where I screwed up, and then on the next one, I really, really try to focus on correcting those mistakes or those failures. So, And then number three here, your primary job is to be a a problem solver. I always believe that as a composite photographer, first and foremost, above everything else, you're a problem solver. For me, I'm always solving some kind of problem. So in the concept, I have to solve problems uh, when I go to do the photography because of the way I do the photography, because of the market that I serve. Uh, I have to be very, very quick. These aren't full day shoots. These are like an hour to an hour and a half shoots. I have to be very, very quick and solve problems very, very fast. And then when we get into Photoshop, again, uh, because maybe some of the images aren't ideal or perfect uh, or concept changes a little bit, I have to solve those problems. There's no other choice. I'm being paid big bucks to create portraits or images for people. Uh, and my job is to create the best damn portrait they can get and solve the problems to get me from point A to point B. So there you go. All right, so let's get into this uh, tutorial today. By the way, I have a note so I can remember all that crap because I can't remember it just uh, organically. Let me stick it back up here so I can remember Raif's name. <clears throat> all right, so this is what we're working here and I'm gonna click off the final image here and go to the splashes. So if you look at the feet here, Come on, computer, speed up. I'm much faster than my computer. Technology is still yet to uh, speed up to where I'm at today. All right, so th these are the splashes. I'm gonna remove them. So you can see we have two layers of different splashes. So we have a back splash that happens behind his feet, foot, and then a front splash that happens in front. And so this is my son, Nico. 
sure if I had. Okay, so this is my son Nico. So to pose him, I had him standing on a little rock here <coughs> uh, to get his foot up, and then his back foot is on a curb. And you can see that in a breakdown that I'll be posting at some point. Now the key here is uh, clearly he's not stepping into a puddle of water. Now to do this authentically and idealistically, I would have him stepping into water, running into water, creating that splash. That'd be the easiest way, right? But I don't do anything easy. I like to do it the hard way. So this is what we're going to do. And we're going to create those splashes in front and in back. All right. So let's break into this. And then after we're finished here, we're going to go over to Raif's image. And I'm going to show you how we took his son's foot here and created a splash around that. Okay. So, oop get rid of that don't save it all right so let's get into this here all right so the first thing that you need is a sample to pull from because we're going to use our clone stamp to create this all right so we're going to use our sample here as our base all right so i took a piece of this sample right up here and I created a base splash here. You can do it without, for some reason my computer is really slow today. You can do it without this base. You can actually create this all with a clone stamp. So we're gonna go in here. You have to make sure that your new layer is above your sample layer that you're gonna use. And then we're gonna push Man, I'm just all over the place. So S on a Mac to get our clone stamp. And then we're going to go in here and just find a water brush. So you have to have some water brushes. I have a number of them. There's only a few that I really like for this sample. <coughs> so we're going to go in here and we're going to pull some of those. So that's a good one to start with. And we're going to bring it down in size. So we have our base here that we started with, and then we're going to come up here and just clone stamp from an area within our sample because we like all this rushing water. It gives us some good texture and not just a white, uh, you know, a white speck in the. Let's see, and you can vary it because I like different textures here and we're gonna go right there and let's just use that for instance oh, I don't know and then you place your water there and then wait for 10 minutes for your computer to catch up to you because you are brilliant That's looking kind of cool right there. And then we're going to create another layer here. Uh, we're going to pull a different brush. Let's see here. Something with a little bit more splash to it is what I'm thinking. Just to get some more splash out to the side there. And this is not going to look the way I did it before, I promise you, because nothing ever does. <laughs> All right, so um, let's just go there. Boom. And you can create a new layer for this. It's always good to work in different layers. So you can always go back and change something easily if you need to. Uh, that's not really getting me where I want to go here. So let's create another layer so I can get rid of that if I so desire. And then we'll come up here. Just keep creating. This is about layering. Not Larry, but layer Larrying. <laughs> layering. Say that three times. That's that's tough. Layering. Layering. Okay, so we're gonna keep layering here. So that's looking kind of cool. That's not bad, right? And then let's do this line here. We're going to create another layer. Um, bring that down here. So you can see that's at an angle. 
kind of want it to be more horizontal with the water there. Right back. Come up here, pull from there. Let's flip this thing Y and get it facing up. When I say up, I mean the edges there kind of turn up. So I just want it to look like it's actually going up. All right, so we're going to pull from here. Let's turn off the shape dynamics. So that's screwing me way up here because every time I click on my brush or place a, a brush, it changes because of those um, dynamics that we had created up here. So we're going to create that there. Cool. So that's looking pretty good there. Now let's create a couple of back slashes. So let's group this into one group here. So that's our front splash. Now we're going to create a couple of back splashes. And when I say back, I mean behind the legs, because when you take a step like that, you're going to get splashed behind the leg as well. So, uh, well, we could probably be pretty dang convincing without it. And yet our, <laughs> our goal isn't perfection. We still want to maintain some realism here to this project. So we're going to get that. Let's go with that. And then let's see here. What's this one? Ooh, that's a good, that's a good splash brush right there. And that, that's cool. All right. So we're going to go right up there. All right, and then we can move this one. Let's group this, and then we're gonna group, pull that one down below Nico's leg, or below Nico, so then it's gonna go behind Nico's leg there, as you can see. So see how that happens? And our shadow is already there on Nico's layer, so we actually get shadowing on the water, which we want. And then we're going to come in here and turn all those layers on. We got a nice splash effect there on from Nico's foot. Now to take this one level up, just so you can see real quick, you know, the on the pants here, because he's stepping into water, he's going to have a bit of that... Uh, look like it's uh wet and i'm not sure which layer it is here on this indeed it's that one all right so you create that look on his pants to make it look like his pants actually are getting a little bit wet from the actual splash how freaking cool is that all right so let's in this part of this go back out all right so there's our splash a little bit different, as you can see from what I created, a little bit more um, splash happening, a little thicker, but covered up his foot. And that's really what it is, is, is about a cover up. All right, so let's go over here to this one real quick. And let me show you how I did that one. Basically the same exact way. I uh, had our sam sample. I used this as our sample, went in and just started creating different effects. All right. So this was our effect here. Blow it up here. All right, so this was our effect here. Some shaping on the, or wetness on the leg there. And then we created our first little layer of splashing. And then our second layer, which covers the top of the foot up, which is what we want. That top of the foot is kind of funky. And then we're gonna put in our last layer here, which is kind of cool. And then to create the shadow that is cast by his leg and feet, I just combine those layers into a group, attach another layer, and then paint it right on top of that with black, and then brought it down to about 40% opacity. Boom! We've got a splash created by his feet. Now, obviously we can do a lot better. We could actually create some uh, wetness on this rock, like splash wetness on the rock, uh, create a little bit more of a bigger splash behind him, 
happening, which I would assume were in front right here because it's rushing water. So you would actually see maybe a little bit more splash here in front from the water rushing against his leg. A little less here on back, perhaps. I don't know, it's again, it's just about being convincing. So anyway, that's how I create splashes using Photoshop. And Rafe, I hope this helped you. I hope you can go out there and, and create something even better than what I did here on, on the image that you've created. And what I'd like you to do is after you're finished, email me a follow-up picture so I can see how you did and what you did on your picture. And if you guys have any questions on Photoshop, how to create something in Photoshop for your composite, how to composite something, it doesn't matter if it has to do with compositing in Photoshop, I would love to answer that for you in a video. So please feel free to email me and ask away your questions. And I will see you next time on Photillustrator TV.